Thank you, Yumena. All right, I'm gonna hit my button here it's, uh, so I can see. Okay, hi guys. Uh, happy Friday and welcome to another fun beating class. Um, we were just talking before class, like we're getting up there towards like 80 classes that we've done with Michaels. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I mean, I lost count, but yeah, it's it's gonna be fun. So um, the project we have today is it's special because it's actually one that one of the first projects that we did. Um, it just wasn't a live class. We did a couple classes that were video and were on the website. And so um, this was one of them and it was made in the summer of 2020. <laughs> And so um, we decided, well, let's teach it because it's a, a really popular style and we're getting into summer again. And so uh, it will be nice to have something bright colors and something that's just on trend for summer. And leather um, is always in style. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like every time I look in a magazine, uh, I see leather and, and it doesn't even matter like what the style of like accessory is. It can be so many different genres. So it's just so versatile and it never goes out of style. So yeah. This is a really fun one. It's a, a great tool um, to have in your jewelry making toolbox. And so I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks and spins that um, that I like to use for these types of jewelry. And um, I wanna make sure I show you things like adding threads. You can make long multi wraps. And uh, I am gonna be using today the tying station. And this is a product from Beetalon that is a recent discovery for me, um, re relatively recent. I used to just use a clipboard. So I'll show you both ways. You can also use a macrame board if that's something you prefer. The key is being able to get under it. And I have a trick um, when we get to this part in the class when we're setting up. I'll show it here first in case anyone is working with just, that is literally a chip clip, a bag clip. <laughs> and it's what I did for a long time and it works. So hey, I'm gonna share it. And then I'm gonna show the tying station which has some advantages because it's very easy to get underneath it. And it's, it has some other little features that make making super long ones kind of cool. So uh, we'll do both. We'll show setting them up on, and then we'll show how to get to stitching. I wanted to talk a little bit about the measurements in the handout. So the measurements in the handout, if you guys know me, I make all my bracelets too small. They're like six inches. So the measurement you will get with these is six inches. So I'm gonna show you all the places where you should add thread to the like measurement or add counts to get up to seven, seven and a half, eight inches for your links. And of course, if you're going all the way around, how to multiply that out. Okay, so um, on the mat, I've got a bunch of stuff. This is kind of like a, uh, what's it called? A material heavy design, but uh, it's got a lot going on, but it's all pretty simple stuff. Any seed beads you'd like. You don't have to use size eight. I just went with size eight because they're a nice mix. Um, I find with, with the leather I'm using, you want to kind of tie your seed bead to your leather. And with one millimeter leather, which is what I pulled for today's class, you can get away with using some 10 110. Um, they're really tiny to see for a Zoom class. So I went up to 80. But if you're working with a larger leather, like a 1.5 millimeter or even a two, you can pull up those size six seed beads and they'll look really great in there too. So there's a lot of potential and this method will work for all of those different seed beads in different leathers. Um, the only trick is making sure that you can get your leather through your clasp option, which in our class today, we're using some buttons that I found in the, um, there's like a, a bag of dress it up buttons in the button section, like kind of like in the sewing section at Michael's. And this is also online and the SKU for it is in the handout, but there's all these cute little treasures in it. And I mean, it's super random and it's a big, big container. So I've been using the same one container for like two years. But I find a new button every time I dig through it. So in the handout, you'll see that we used these a lot. There's a bunch of them in there. But any button will work. The trick is making sure your button, and this is why I went with one millimeter, making sure your button will go through. So I found 1.5 millimeter didn't fit, so I had to go down to the one. But that limitation was just strictly because I wanted to use that button. So test that out first and see what you've got. That will work. So there's leather and buttons, seed beads. Um, some other things you're gonna need, thread. And you can use either thread that you prefer. Um, in my uh, like beginning days, I was using things like this. But like more recently, I've used things like wildfire to do these wrap bracelets and they work great. So either one you have handy that you'd like using, if you are gonna use the Nymo, um, you'll wanna have some beeswax or thread conditioner. It will help you out a lot. I'll probably demo today with wildfire just because it's a little bigger, easier to see, and it goes 
it goes a little faster with the wildfire because it's thicker. So it, um, I feel like it just kind of spreads the beads out a little more. And that's an interesting thing to think about when you choose your thread. Um, Hypocement, and we'll need this to make our knots, especially if you're going to um, add thread. You want to make sure you've got some hypocement handy or something like it, just any kind of jewelry glue, scissors. Um, and that's really, that's everything except for the tying station itself. So let me get this out and show you what's in it. Get this out of the way. So when you open the box and ignore all my rubber bands, that's my addition, but when you get it out, out of the box, you'll see there's this piece right here. This is handy for if you um, are making a super long one and you don't want to compress your beads because at a certain point you'd have to run your beads under the plate. And so if you switch this plate for this plate, it won't crush your beads as badly when you're, because you need it to stay secure to, to get held in place, but it um, you want to be gentle when you're pressing down on top of your seed beads. So that's my interpretation of what this is for, but you won't need it in the beginning. You'll need it if you're making it longer than longer than eight inches, roughly, because we're gonna we're gonna use this in a way that kind of gobbles up the first two inches. So the key to wrap bracelets, in my opinion, is tension, getting the tension of your leather right. There's a couple ways you can do that, and the tying station makes it really easy. I do start with a rubber band, and the way I do that is each of these ends has like these little like loosenable. I never quite remove them. I just loosen them so I can move them. And it slides up and down from the bottom. And this one's kind of like locked into a square on the top. So it's pretty versatile. But what I end up doing for the first part of this design is putting a rubber band under the plate. So this is a rubber band that I shortened. You could also just fold it in two. Um, so whichever works for you. And you'll want to get it underneath the plate. It's kind of like that. And then I move it up so it's just maybe, maybe about that much showing. And you'll you'll have to play with this when you get your rubber band going and seeing like how much stretch it's got. Everybody's going to have a different rubber band, so just play with it and see how it looks when you start working with it. And then tighten down the top. So the rubber band doesn't move when you pull on it. And I might make that a little tighter. I want it to be up a little more. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna create like kind of a spring tension and it's going to enable me to stitch right up against my button. And a lot of the designs that you see these used for, they go ahead and just put the clasp up here and they start doing the work, but we need to put stitches right next to our button. So that's why I put the rubber band there and then I get my button behind it and I get tension. So that's the that's kind of a you know a little tip that you can decide if you like it or not. And then we'll we'll start it with a new leather, but you can secure your leather the usual way that the tying station works. And I'll show that when we get to that with our with our setup. But before I move on with that, I want to show the clipboard way, just in case anyone's got a clipboard today. So Let's build, let's build a starting one here. I'm gonna work with this color leather so my thread will contrast and I'll work with some black thread. And in the handout, it says 26 inches or so. I'm gonna show you where it says that, 18 to 20 inches. I would say even go, go longer, um, maybe 25, maybe even 30, depending how long you'd like it to be. And keep in mind, if you want to make it adjustable, one of the reasons I used to make these so short, six inches was my beaded length. And then I would make them adjustable out to uh, eight inches by having like as many as three button loops. So you, you have to kind of think ahead from what measurement you like, but give yourself room to make some knots comfortably with your leather. Um, and I think for me today, I'm probably going to cut 25, 25 here. Extra is better than too little. The leather, you know, you don't like to waste your leather. So it's a trade off, right? And if you like the idea of making them adjustable, you know, by all means, make it, make it the short length the way, you know, it's described in the handout and then just make those adjustable ends. 
And I'm going to cut it right about there. All right. And let's get our button. I'm just going to string that through. If you're having any trouble getting your button through, cut your leather on a diagonal. So cut it kind of like that. And it'll go through a button better if you're trying to get through like a small, like a, a smaller shank. And run that button to the middle of your leather. To find the midpoint, just bring your ends together. Bring it down. And now we're just going to tie a really quick overhand knot. So loop around. And I'm going to help my knot move up. Okay. And anytime you have a knot like this in leather, if you feel like you need to tighten it, you can hold your button, pull one at a time on each strand. And that can sometimes give you a little tighter, tighter connection there. Okay, so let's show the clipboard setup and then we'll move it over to the tying station. So we've got that ready. And here's just a basic everyday clipboard. I've got a rubber band and I've also got literally a chip clip. Um, and it's got inside of it one of these padded, so that'll be nice on your leather. It won't hurt it too much. Something like that will work. Just whatever you've got around. You can also use a binder clip. That would be fine too. And what I do is not everybody's clipboard will have a circle. So if you don't have a circle, you're going to have to clip your clip your rubber band underneath this. But I like to give it because um, I need to get under it, right? So I use that this part to my advantage and. I'll just lark's knot my rubber band. And if your rubber band is too long, like mine's not gonna give me good tension because it's too long. What I'll actually do is double it like that, bring that through. And this can be a little tricky, so bear with me, but um, just bring it through like a lark's knot doubled. And so you get something kind of tight like that. And then bring your button under here so that's intention right and then bring this down and as you bring it down just kind of pay attention to which which size my leather on doesn't have to be perfect but get it to the bottom and try not to fling it to the ends of the universe because this is a real slingshot going here but and then just go ahead and use your clip clip's going to need to be pretty tight but so this is what i have here and see, I can get under it. And I know everyone's clipboards are gonna be different, but play with what you got and see, you know, what would work. There's lots of things. I've even seen people use like a box, you know, like one of those wooden frames. They sell those at Michael's for, um, you know, like making cricket signs. Those will work beautiful too for this. You just put some clips at the top and the bottom rubber band on the top clip and you get something that's really a great tension for stitching. We're kind of what we're doing here is we're creating what is essentially like the warp threads of a loom. And if you think of it like that, it will kind of explain why the tension is helpful. But so I'm going to pull this off of here and then show what that looks like on tying station really quick. Danielle? Yeah. Any questions? Well, on yeah, it's Carmi. While you're doing the second setup now. Cindy was <laughs> asking, do you ever use a button without a shank? Yeah, and this would work the same way. Um, and I should have brought one of those up. There's a bunch of them in that little set. But yeah, you would just take your leather and you would, um, you'd run it through one hole of the button and down through the other hole and then just make the knot just like that. And instead of going through a shank, it would just be this loop right here would be going through in fact, I think that might even be how I illustrated it. Yeah, so you would you would just do this. Instead of going through the shank, it's just going through the, the, the loops. And again, you'd want to make sure your leather fits in the holes. Perfect. Thanks, Danielle. Cindy's opened up her button collection and found a non-shank button. Yeah, that should work OK. We're going to ask her to try it and post it. Yeah, I can't wait to see the and button. I love buttons. Sharon was button. also asking about whether you've ever used charms, but I'll let, I'll let you continue with the button for now. Oh yeah, you know, I like to put charms on the ends, like where, when I get to the end and I show the, um, I like to put charms right here to kind of decorate my leather wraps. 
Yeah, there, oh, there's so many cool ideas. I can kind of go crazy on these ideas. But so here's the here's the time station. And again, all I did was I've got these plates in here. They come when you get a brand new and they come actually in position like this, they'll be loose but attached like that. So you can see which pieces go where. There's also great instructions if um, you've taken it apart and need to remember how it goes back. And I do believe that you can use, like for example, these pieces here, top and bottom, I believe they're the same. So if you ended up with one on the top or one on the bottom, it's not gonna make a huge difference. And essentially what they are is just these two plates, right? With the wing nut that is connecting them so that you can tighten them down and secure your, your work in place. And so all I did here was I took that rubber band and I tightened it down so that it's not loose here. And then here at the bottom, this comes out down here. You just kind of position it in there, bring that down. And my leather is going to go on either side under this plate. So let's get, I'm sorry, it's, it's hard to see in one view. I'm going to just do my best to make sure you can see what I'm doing. There's the, the button there. And now I'm going to move this up a little bit. Take each side and just bring it under the plate. That might fade a little bit. And then slide that all the way down. And while you're, before you twist it tight, um, right here what I'm doing is I'm pulling on it a lot. So I'm giving it tension here at the top. Right, not too much, but just enough. You're gonna lose about an inch and a half of what's measured in you know, length on the side. When I say lose that, it means that our bracelet's gonna start at like the one, one and a quarter inch mark. That's where we're gonna start doing beading. So, and this part's a little tricky, so bear with me, but getting it to tighten down without moving, right? Okay, I need an extra hand for that. Um, something to note down here, you do need it to hold position, but don't go too crazy because you don't want your leather to get, you know, too, too, oh, sorry, to get too crushed. Just, you know, enough to hold it, but not enough to cut it. It's not sharp, but it is going to make a little bit of a mark. You won't see it under your knots. This is where our knots are going to be, but just keep that in mind uh, when you're tightening it down. So here's what I've got. You can see my button starting here. So my stitching is not even going to start till about an inch and a half down. And then when you're measuring, you just have to remember that when we get to eight, we're not really at eight. <laughs> we're at more like six, right? Or seven and a half, roughly. So as you're measuring, once you've got stitching here, like about this much stitching, if you want to, you can move it up by taking the rubber band away, loosening the plate. Optionally, you can replace this plate with this and put it down on top of the beads. And that way you can just keep going. And every time, every time you need to re-secure and of course adjust your leather length so that it's, it's got the plate to keep going, right? But I'm just making one, one, one around and I'm going for about six and a half, seven inches or so. So now we gotta get the thread. And um, just out of curiosity, is everyone preferring to try it with the wildfire or you think in the Nymo? So I need to use that one out of curiosity. They both work. I'm going to wait and see if I have any answers for you. Yeah. Karen's wildfire. Wildfire. I'm going to do wildfire. Karen's here. wildfire. Susan's wildfire. Wildfire. Oh, we got a nylon. Uh, yes. Sadly, the wildfire has won. The wildfire has won. Okay. I'm going to speak to the nylon and I'll work with wildfire myself. And I actually cut two yards of thread. In the handout, it says like 46 inches. And if you're a brand new beginner, and especially if you're working with a Nymo, that short length will help you. You're gonna have to add thread, but that shorter length, um, the reason that it's helpful is because this is worked on doubled thread and doubled thread likes to tangle. It goes crazy tangling. Um, so it, I think it does actually really help to work with a shorter length, especially if this is something new that you're just trying out. Um, but if you don't want to have to add thread, go with a little bit longer, maybe even double that. I cut two yards, um, which is probably going to be way more than I need, but I'm not going to have to add thread, but we'll see if I get tangles. <laughs> I am working with the wildfire. And so I'm getting some channels pliers out so I can flatten. 
the end so I can get it through my needle. Got a beading needle here. If you're working with the Nymo, the nylon thread, you want to run that through, um, let me show you really quick. If you have a beeswax, tea light candle, regular candle, anything like that, take your Nymo thread and run it through this. And let me see if I have one handy that I can show. You would have it kind of like on the spool like this and cut it off the spool, right? Take it like and press down. So I'm just pressing my thumb, pressing it into the wax and then just pull. And it takes the curve off of it and that's gonna mean less knots. And it'll also make it easier for you to get your needle threaded too. So keep that in mind if you're working with this thread. If you're working with wildfire, we just flattened the end and it got our needle threaded. And now we're gonna run it to the midpoint. And so I'm gonna just take one end of the thread. And I'm gonna take the other end of the thread way down here and bring the ends together. And I'm gonna tie an overhand knot. Okay. I haven't run it to the midpoint yet, but the needle's just kind of hanging out there. Once I've got my overhand knot tied, I'll pinch it. And then just gently, without damaging your thread, just gently guide your needle down to the midpoint. And how I'm finding the midpoint is I'm just holding the knot that I made. This is a little overhand knot right there. Pinch it. And then just gonna bring that needle to the midpoint. So a needle at the midpoint, not here. Great time to add glue. So I got the hypo cement. Just get a little dot of glue on your knot there. The wildfire is gonna be a little more forgiving as far as coming undone. The Nymo, I recommend doing a knot with glue because it'll, it'll just make it a little bit more reliable stuff out of the way here. The other thing is if you're working with super long thread, it's gonna literally, it will pick up anything on your desk and carry it <laughs> as you're stitching. So just, you know, FYI on that. Um, here's some beads and don't worry about colors right now. Um, the pattern that's in the handout, I'm gonna pattern really quick before I start jumping into stitching. The pattern on the back has like a sunshine in the center. It's a middle. And then there's these repeats of stripes. And in the sample that I did over here, I just did stripes all the way. You can do that any pattern you'd like. I'm gonna just start showing the stripes. If you're doing this pattern and you wanna make it about seven inches, do nine or 10 repeats of stripe and then switch the pattern to where it starts doing the sunshine in the opposite direction. But this is one of those patterns you definitely have to tailor to the length of design that you're working on. Okay. And if your leather, another thing I want to point out is if your leather starts loosening here while you're working, you can use that trick with the bag clip or you can tie another knot down here and you can clip your knot, but you'll have to make a knot that you can undo, which I find somewhat more difficult to do than just to clip it. Then you can take your clip and just, alternatively, you can try maybe putting a little more pressure here. So it's kind of just like, it's a give and take between pressure and having it stay tight but not cut your leather. So here's the needle thread. Thread's doubled. You got the knot at the end. I'm going to bring it underneath this one. This is the one on my left. And if you're if you would like to work from this side to the other side, as with looming, it will work in both directions. So I feel like you're a, a left-handed person. You can always do what I'm doing here on the right side. But I usually, I bring it under the left because I, I am right-handed. So I'll bring it under the left and then bring your needle through the two here. So remember, we've got a knot here. So we're bringing it through, we're making what's called a lark's knot. And so that lark's knot's just gonna lock itself in place onto the leather. And I'm gonna hold that up so you guys can see it. See, it's stuck on there. And I'm just gonna slide it up so that it's sitting just a little bit underneath my button. So 
a bump in my letter. It doesn't want to go over it. There we go. Okay. Did everybody see that okay? It's just a lark's knot and it's stuck there. And now we're going to pick up a bead. And this next trick is optional. If, it, if it's frustrating in any way, just skip it and you can always weave these in later. But I like to save myself um, doing it later. So I take each of these ends and I bring it into the bead right now. It's a little trickier to do it with Nymo, but it's possible. It helps if it's waxed. But again, this is optional, just only if you like it. The reason I like it is I can pull the, you see how my knot is there? Can you see that little knot? I'm gonna pull these threads and these threads apart. This is like my tail here. And this is the working side. And I'm gonna lock that knot in there. And it's a knot that has glue on it and everything. So it's a really secure start, pretty solid start there. And I'm gonna bring my needle under both of the leather strands now, but under, under both. And it's gonna pull that bead around and you'll wanna help it sit in between the two pieces of leather. So just help it sit like right there. And now we're gonna do what's basically just looming, right? Um, we're gonna bring the needle around it's going to come around the top now. So you see it's going to cross over the top of the leather, go through the bead. And remember, we've got a knot in that bead. So wiggling through it without puncturing the knot. And then I'm going to hold this. This is the tail thread while I pull this working side. And go slowly. This likes to knot and tangle like you would not believe always in those first few stitches. But if you go slowly, it really helps, especially with an IMO. But um, there it is, the little bead is it's right there. And that was one stitch. And now I'm gonna grab um, two beads now, but before I do that, I'm gonna come underneath the leather. So go underneath with your needle all the way through. So our thread's coming out from underneath. Pick up two more beads. Slide those down. And this part's a little tricky. We're gonna have to help, help them sit kind of side by side like that. And then again, you're gonna come through the top. So we're, we're on top of the leather now. And I always switch hands. So I can pull with whatever their hand is on the side that I'm pulling through kind of slowly. I am terrified of knots. And then back under, again, here's one back underneath both strands of leather. And now we need three beads. Bring those over. And under. And three is for me the trickiest to get to sit right. So I usually just get my needle through and then I use my needle to adjust it in place meaning to kind of spin those beads so they sit. I'm watching those tail threads then. So you want to come in and get stuck. There we go. And I didn't didn't trim my tail threads yet. It's easier to do off the, you know, off of the loom than on it, but you could trim them now if they're getting in your way, but they won't be in our way for long. So I like to get closer to them when the work's flipped over because the, the tails are protruding from underneath the leather. So to cut them, you want to put tension here and snip it. So we'll, we'll do that at the end, but if it is getting in your way, feel free to cut them at this step. Okay, once again, under the leather. And now I'm going to bring a new color in. And the new color is, I'm going to start the pattern. And so to do the pattern, all you do is you introduce a new color as your first bead. And then the next row, you do the new color twice. And then in the next row, you do three of the new color. And then you start transitioning in a new color after that and just keep going until you reach what you think is your midpoint. And I recommend if you haven't made them these before and you're not sure how long or midpoint you want, go ahead and just make the whole thing stripey like that. Measure it and then count how many repeats till you have a center. So for me, if I wanted this one to have that 
center point where it becomes a diamond or a, a triangle in the center and transitions, it would be my ninth one. So the one here in purple, I would just switch the direction of, of the new bead, which means instead of it being the first bead you add, it becomes the last one. So I'll show you what I mean when I get through that. That's what I'm gonna start doing. But so for where we are now, we just want one new bead and then two of the old color. And just bring those down. My work's flipping just a little bit, but under and over. Try not to poke your leather. I know it's really hard to do, uh, to not to do it, but it's um, it's better if you don't poke the leather with your needle. So two new color, one old color. And I'll just keep going. Um, please feel free to jump in if I've, you know, gone too fast or anyone wants a question about it. Something we've shown. I'm just gonna go under. Also for um for beginners, if you wanted to just do one bead for the whole length, that's totally great because it's a little tricky to get the transition from one to three up like that. That's kind of an advanced thing. If this is frustrating, maybe just make a couple with one bead. Just one bead is the, for the entire duration of it. That's a really cute style. And um, it's minimalist and it's it's really in right now. So um, I need a new color now. I'm gonna grab another one. And I was thinking like, especially since we're working with one millimeter, just a simple row of little size eights on one millimeter. That's beautiful. And I'm almost to a point where if I wanted to, I could remove the rubber band and bring it under. I'm going to just keep going. But after you have about this much, you've got room to clip it. Just as long as you've got a wide enough section here to get underneath the plate. You can do that now if you need to. So two of the new color. And so you can see the pattern, it's super, it's a super easy premise of just entering a new color. Every three rows or so. Danielle, I wanna ask you a question that I'm sure is on a few people's mind. Sure. Um, this is this is one of your favorite bracelets. Um, I've known that since I, I've started to get to know you. Is it or has it been a bestseller for you? Oh yeah, these sell a lot. They sell more online, I think for some reason. I'm not sure why, but it I did definitely sell a lot of them in shows too. But they were crazy sellers online. And I think maybe the reason is that they're just everyone loves them, right? They're and they make great gifts because I think the adjustable nature makes it easy for someone to just buy it and not worry about bracelet sizing. Because so you can do this adjustable finish on it. And you can use any beads you want. It's another really great thing about it. Um, so I'm switching colors now. I'm gonna switch to these two. But feel free to use any colors you want. Those aren't very contrasting there, but it's still cute. You know, it's great to see Danielle because I can definitely see, you know, those of us who like rainbow for that time of the year, or if you've got to match school colors or that this is the perfect um, design that uh, whatever beads you have, it'll work. And even if you have one vial of mixed beads, you know, don't even try and follow a pattern. Just grab whatever mixed bead arrives first. That's beautiful. Yeah, like I want to do one with our deep sea mix. That's one of the Edo check mixes and it's it's really beautiful colors and just make it like a little oceany one with a little maybe seashell charm at the end. Oh, charm. Perfect. 
Um, Susie's just saying that these are really happy colors. Yeah, our, our opaque like Edo's are so good. They're just go-to, they're really pretty. And I'm just really randomly just selecting which ones to add. Just whichever two button it up in my hand at that moment, that's the one I went with. And see, they go pretty fast too. I'm gonna speed up just a little bit. It seems like um, everybody's doing okay. I wanna be able to show the end. You're missing on the sidebar a few, a few little comments from some of your regulars who've been with you since the beginning, who've been saying it used to be during the class, Sharon would take the entire hour just to get her needle threaded. Oh no. She's improved since then, obviously. Yeah, getting needles threaded and as a teacher, oh my gosh, guys, I, I get real heart palpitations thinking about that because it can just derail your whole class. And you, like, say you prepared all this wonderful content and you're all excited about it, you never get to it. Because <laughs> when I used to teach in person, I'd walk from table to table threading needles and you'd lose so many beginners because of that. So if anyone invents a needle that can thread itself, let me know. Maybe it'll be Sharon. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, like once once it, um, something like that happens really early in a class, you you lose um, the excitement so quickly. And so it, just from the perspective of the teacher, it's like, but hey, you know, this really awesome stuff's coming up. Trust me. And they're like, yeah, we don't like sea beating. And so you did mention it when we started. This bracelet that you're making is about six inches wide. I'm going for 6.5 length. The width is actually um, about, so a hair under half an inch, it's a little over a quarter inch. Um, and in the handout, if you cut like the 46 inches of thread that it says to, you're gonna end up adding thread, but your risk of getting tangles is lower. And I'm always really torn about what to recommend. I, I struggle with it, to be honest, because no matter what I recommend, someone's going to struggle with it. <laughs> and so if you've got too much thread, you end up with a knot, you end up having to cut it, and then you end up having to weave in anyway. And so my thinking was I would show adding thread for that reason. And I'm getting short already with what I'm working with. So getting pretty close to that spot. In fact, I could just show it now with the thread I've got. Why don't I do that? Okay, so let's say I'm like out of thread right now and I wanna add more. What I would do from here, I just finished a stitch, right? And you're gonna make, make sure when you're running out of thread, leave yourself um, 10, 11, 12 inches to work with. Don't go so short that you can't do this next step. And if you did, go ahead and back out. Use your needle this direction to back out um, of the stitch. But from here, what you'd wanna do I'm going to go through the row I just created again. So you kind of turn it on its side a little bit to see what I'm doing. But if you press this bead down, you can go under the leather again. And you want to go back through the beads underneath the leather, both strands. I'm going to try to get through. And then just double check and make sure that you went through those beads and that the needle's under the leather in both cases. And it's tricky, just, you know, you'll have to give yourself some grace there and try, try to go slow and make it work out. But once you've gone under there like that, from where you are here, pick up the thread that's right here. So what I'm doing right now is I'm coming underneath and then up through. So let me show you a little closer. It's hard to see, but consider like I've gone under I've gone, I've gone under this strand, right? And I'm just doing a hitch knot now. And this is actually, it's shown as one of the last steps in the handout too, but I just made a little knot right there. And you'll need to pull each strand individually to get your knot to be tight. I don't know if you guys can see them. I've got a knot there. And now I'm gonna pull the knot into the bead. So go through. All of those beads again on the top. We're running on top of the letter now. It's going to be tight and you're going to 
struggle not to poke the leather. Just be really careful. And if you have to go through it one bead at a time, go ahead and do that. It'll, it'll be good. So I'm pulling the needle through, going all the way through, but I'm gonna stop here. I'm not gonna pull the knot in just yet. Before I pull the knot in, I wanna make sure that it's secure. So I'm gonna grab some glue. And you can do this on the back side if you prefer. It sometimes helps by, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. You're not gonna see that knot anyway. So whichever is easier. And now that I've got my glue on the knot, I'll bring it through. You'll go, you're gonna wanna pull it one strand at a time and kind of hold the beads if you want to. And there you go. The knot should kind of just tuck itself into the bead, a little bit of glue on it. And then you take your scissors, push down and pull up. And that should be pretty good. So now to add the new, the new line. Once again, you'd cut your new, your new length of thread, whatever you're comfortable working with, just cut that. Run your needle to the midpoint of that strand. Mine's already at that midpoint, so I'm just gonna stick with what I have here. And then tie an overhand knot at the end. Let that go in. Same thing we did before with the glue. We wanna put a little dab of glue on our knot. Put that on there. And race to the finish to get this capped before it starts to leak. You gotta love hypo cement for that. Okay. So there's my glue. I'm gonna do the same thing we did before, right? Come underneath the left hand side. And then you just come up through this in between the strands, right? Making that lark's knot. Bring it up to sit right below the last row. And let's start adding our beads. So coming underneath. And let's get one and two. And then a purple one just sticking with my pattern. Oh, and then I forgot my little trick. Optional, if you want to feed those tails into the beads before you keep going. I think it helps. Now you're dealing with three beads instead of one here. So it's gonna be even trickier with the Nymo, but the wildfire um, just goes, it just goes right on through. Here we go. So now I'm gonna go and pull these around. So they sit in between here. And see how that's kind of like not, it's not um, in the same spacing. Fix that now if you don't like that. Make it look, make it look like it's just continuing right along where you were, right where you left off. And then just bring this over both of the letters through beads. And there's a knot over here, remember? So we're just trying to not poke through it. You're gonna have to wiggle your needle a lot because that knot is, it's gonna be in your way. So just feel for it and move your needle around to not poke it. And you'll know because your thread just like, it just won't go through until you've gotten around it. And again, I'm holding on to the tails. One last adjustment here, making sure it's where I want it to be. And let's carry on underneath. And you can trim that anytime, the tail there. Because the thread's protruding from the back, I'm going to do it at the end, but you can do it anytime. Danielle, is there a reason why you choose to use a double thread and not a single? Um, it's a couple of things. It's stronger. And then it also makes tying on easier. So the way we attached it to the leather there on the side, it's easier to do. But I do know some people that don't do it that way. I know some people that start their wrap bracelets. Um, there's actually a lot of different methods to be totally honest with you. There's people who start with, they actually macrame their thread a little bit here. Can you imagine doing macrame with size D thread, but they do it. And then they have two strands they're working with and they kind of like make figure eights through their beads. That's a beautiful way to do it. It's a little trickier to do in my opinion. I like, I'm a loomer and because I am a loomer, this was 
what felt good to me to do. It but definitely just, makes sense. Yeah. I'm going to transition here to making the little triangle shape that's in our pattern. And so wherever you are in your pattern that you want to start making, to, like, pretend this is my midpoint. This is far too short, but let's pretend it's my midpoint here. You would introduce your new color as the last bead instead of the first bead. So actually, and then sometimes what I'll do is I'll start working backward in my color order. So instead of going red to yellow, I would go red to purple. And so it's going to make a little mountain. And this is that same, you know, under over stitch that we've been doing throughout. One old color and then the two new. Super simple pattern. You don't even really need to follow the, the pattern that's in the handout because it's just intuitive once you get going. How are we doing on? We're okay. We're, we're getting a little tighter on time, so I can finish this at any step here. We'll go, let's go a few more rows and then we'll show finishing it. It's going to be a little short. Danielle, because you're making a size for an adult, um, do you have a recommendation for someone who's watching today of a length for children? Yeah. Um, so, Let's see, one of my friend's little girls that I used to make bracelets for, I would make them three and a half inches adjustable up to four inches. And she was about seven. Um, I had a friend uh, with a 10 year old who I used to make them about four and a half adjustable to five inches. Okay, thank you. And I've made some bracelets for my boys actually leather wrap bracelets because they like these. I made them in like a Halloween colors once. They were a little younger than they are now, but my four-year-old, he needed like 2.75 inches, little tiny guy. But he's bigger now. I still have that little bracelet though. And so you see how we just, we, we kept going and it just, we switch the direction. So we get a little center point there and a little triangle shape. And every time we introduce a new bead where it used to be the first bead of the new, the new color would become the first bead. It's now the last one we pick up. That's the only difference. I'm just gonna make a few more rows. It's not gonna be symmetrical or long enough, but um, I wanna show finishing it. So let's go. So a little few more rows here. Go a little faster. All right, let's start tapering it down. So if you've got the same design that I've got going here and you want to taper it down to where it ends with one so you can get your knot closer. All you got to do is start working down in color. I usually use the same color as the you know row I've left off. And so now instead of picking up three beads, I'm just going to pick up two. And the same thing, we're going to go under our leather. Those beads to sit in between. And what you're going to notice when you first do your back pass, so which is the one where we're going over the leather the back pass there, is it's not going to stay tight. So watch, I'll pull it tight and it'll kind of loosen up again. So to make it stay tight, this is especially helpful again if you're working with the Nymo. Um, we're going to do that same trick we did before. We kind of just turn it on its side and try to get through these beads from the back. We're going, basically we're going under it, right? Through the beads. I'm trying to make sure I don't poke the leather there. See, I want to get under. And over here. And that will tighten it up for you. So that transition down, the tapering down will be tight. We're just make, basically uh, reinforcing it, going and making that same pass two times. Now we just need one bead. Get one more. 
and then just go under. And then I'm gonna go over the leather through the bead. And same trick as before, I'm gonna try to get through the bead from under. So I'm going through the bead, but I'm under both leathers. And there you go. Now from here, um, instead of going, you know, through the bead again in this direction, which would be our next step to go over the leather through the bead, I'm gonna do that knot again so we can finish it off. So just again, I'm just gonna pick up the thread here. And if I, I know this is hard to see, but what I'm doing is I'm just going under the thread that's protruding from that bead. So I'm just kind of picking it up. And if you get through just a couple of the strands, that's actually okay. I find it still works. So I make my knot. If your knot's not perfect, pull each strand by itself. Start going through the bead. Try not to puncture thread. And then before you pull that loop all the way through, once again, you want to get your, get your glue. And then find your knot. Your knot is right there. And then pull it through into the bead. And then once it's kind of tucked in there, let me get my cap back on my glue. Holy, it's going crazy. There we go. Okay. So once it's in there, you just want to trim it again. If you wanted to also, you can go underneath the leather and back up through the row above it. If you feel like you wanted to do another knot, for example, I never do, um, but you can if you want to. So let's pull this off. And I'll just in the bottom here. off there. And I wanted to show what happened to my leather and, you know, the kind of balance that there is between how much to compress it. It got a little bit, especially like right there, you can see where it kind of smooshed it. So just as gentle as you can, you can even try putting some like packing foam underneath the plate. That would have been a clever idea that I should have thought of. But, uh, and now obviously this is way too short. Do you get the idea? Um, let's get rid of these tails. Let's flip it over. And I'm gonna trim that one by pushing down, pulling up. I'm gonna sharpen my scissors, I think. A burner is good here too, if you're using a burner. And here I'm gonna push down, pull up. And that one didn't quite get trimmed as close as I wanted, but good enough. And so then all you have left to do is decorate your buttonholes for your button. And so what you wanna do is just take your knot I kind of, so um, I hold it in my hand kind of like this and then just wrap it around your two fingers and then pinch it right there with your thumb. Bring those tails through, keep pinching it so your knot will stay, just don't let go of it. And get your knot to go right there. So your, your fingers are kind of acting like you're knotting tweezers a little bit. And then each strand I'm pulling it by itself. And now bring your button around and then just see like, hey, is this gonna fit? Make sure if you have a really high dome button, because this is kind of like a tall button that you give yourself a little extra space. So maybe like, like right there, I'm thinking. So same thing as before, I'm just gonna go around, across right here and bring the ends through. And then I'm not letting go, I'm still pinching it. And then you can also pull these by themselves. I maybe made that a little too big. But until you do this step where you pinch the button and you pull the strands alone, you can get that undone and redo it if you want to. And I made mine too big, so I might do that even though I made it a little tight. But you get the idea, it's kind of, you have to play with it, it's a little finicky. And then you can make another set of knots to make a second buttonhole, like say, Right there.
Yeah, it might actually fit now that I made the second one. Yeah, and so that's that's the general idea, and it's got a lot of um, room for adaptation. And this got a lot of um, things to experiment with, trying different buttons, different closures. Uh, and again, at least I like to put charms. I like to put them, like I'll get a jump ring and I'll put them right there on one of the leather um, spots, like at the end. It's just a cute place to hang a charm and your button will sit next to your charm when it's clasped. So you're, when you're wearing it, let me bring one over that I did properly. <laughs> but um, yeah, so when you bring the button around, your charm would be hanging right there. And it just looks really cute. So it's a way to kind of pull your theme together. Like if this is like a, this is a pearl. So if I put a little shell there and like if these were all the, the, the travertine um, barley ivory color, I'm just kind of picturing that as a design with some gold, with some of the silver lined gold mixed with the barley seashell charm. And then this pearl button, cool for summer. So yeah. This, this Danielle, really your, your timing was perfect today. So um, <laughs> it's funny because on the sidebar, somebody would ask a question and you would answer it before I even asked you. So um, yeah. someone did ask where to add the charm. So that's perfect. And um, yeah, it turned out great. So uh, for the people that are really new, the recording is gonna be really helpful for the experienced regulars. Um, probably just by watching it today, they'll be in action later this afternoon. So um, many thanks in the sidebar, Danielle. Thanks. Yeah, and I just remembered um, Michael's released this as a YouTube video, the video that we did two summers ago. I think if you like go on YouTube, you'd find it. Just uh, on Michael's YouTube, you type in leather wrap bracelets, John Bede, it would pop up. They don't even have to wait for this recording. Yeah, so you can go see it, uh, that version, which is the same pattern you know, that we did here. Um, just on perfect. YouTube. Yeah. Danielle, um, people have noticed, so we don't have a class next week because of the Easter weekend. Um, but I can see behind you so many beautiful classes that are coming. You're wearing something that is on the way. So yeah, I can, if there's time, I can show those really quick. What do you think? You got a few minutes. A few minutes. Okay. Um, so here, I'm going to show them back on the mat. Um, thanks. Thank you. There's, um, this is a crystal class. So we are um, going to start showing some really beautiful designs with gorgeous crystal. And so this is our first class in May. And then these are some really beautiful Preciosa crystal bicones. And this class is going to be really special because Carmi is going to share some info about Czech crystal. And I'm excited to, to learn more about Czech crystal too, because I love it. And it has so much just character and charm. And so that's uh, our first class in May. And I did, I skipped um, our premium class. We have one class left in April. And that's going to be this one here. Make this really quick. This is a cool book can become many things bookmark slash bracelet. The whole idea is I'm going to teach how to do four drop peyote pattern reading. And um, I have a couple. This is the pattern that's in the handout for the class, but I also have a couple other patterns that I did that I'm going to share with you guys. Um, so this, this is our last class in April and it's one of the premium classes. So if you're into some advanced peyote bead reading and pattern reading and stuff, well, that's the one that's coming up for that. Um, and then I just showed you the first class of May, which is uh, all about crystal and we'll make this necklace. And then after that, there's a really cool bracelet. Let me grab that real quick. I of course hooked it on this little thing. And then I can't get it off, but I'll do it here. This is a flowing crystal bracelet. That's what we named it. And it's got more beautiful four millimeter and six millimeter bicones. And like this just waterfall of beautiful stacker bracelet color. This is the versatile technique. You'll enjoy learning it because you can use a lot of different um, beads with it. The concept of just building this little base to build off like a multi-strand. So I really love this. This is like a go-to thing that I do a lot and I enjoy this kind of stitching. So it's um, just really fun. We'll have a good time with that class. And then after that, we have sparkle and bling. <laughs> so this is the um, class that we named uh, budget friendly and then budgetless earrings. So these are the budgetless ones in my hand. These have the round check crystals and a lot of them on Delicas. It's really wild. 
Um, and then here is a version that's a little more budget friendly. It's got the bi cones and then it's got the round check glass beads. And so we thought it'd be cool to show the same technique. Patterns are slightly different. Both patterns are in the handout. And it's a kind of brick stitch where you start with a diamond and then you build your fringe off of a diamond. So something we haven't done before. Danielle, sidebar is so shocked and excited for these. Um, they have not seen these um, online yet. So that's oh. good. I think there'll be a few people going to um, review the new classes. I'm excited. Yeah, and I think hopefully by next week I'll have my wall up um, or before our next class. I'm gonna put the crystal on the wall behind me. It's gonna be very shiny. It's gonna be exciting, so yeah. <laughs> so thank you, Danielle. Um, many Thanks. thank yous and um, farewells on the sidebar today. So it was a great class. Thank you. Thanks, Valerie. <laughs> I'm gonna switch to gallery view really quick so I can see everybody and then say goodbye to everyone. Have a great weekend. And um, thank you so much for being here today. And it's good to see all your smiles. <laughs> All right, happy meeting you guys. I'm wishing you lots of creativity. Bye.